morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you are, what time you're watching this video, what time zone you're in, what part of the world you're in, or when you subscribe to us. Today, let's talk about concrete. Yeah, concrete for okay. sure. Yeah, concrete. What about testing concrete? Okay, if you, if you insist. Well, I, I, I do, I do. <laughs> I really do insist. I want to talk about uh, chloride ponding, maybe, ASTM. C1556? Sure. Ponding of chlorides on to concrete samples. Yeah. And not like throwing in the ocean ponding. Uh, I guess it's the ocean, not a pond, yeah. really, but it's very similar in some ways. Yeah, not like uh, a cement pond as an old 50s TV show used to. I, I don't to. think you can discuss those things oh, on okay. here. Oh, well, um, okay. You know, but we are, in the, we are in the mountains of the foothills of, of hillbilly country. Yes, so, we are. Um, if you couldn't tell by our accents. <laughs> right. What, you have an accent? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't I don't think so. I don't, so I'm, I'm just kind of upset that we didn't get the hair and makeup like we normally get. Yeah, I know. Uh, our, our, uh, our team is just really falling down on the job today. Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> so today's chloride ponding. Um, there have been a few standards on chloride ponding or a few uh, test methods on chloride ponding over the years. The one that uh, I currently like a lot, and I think you do too, Josh, is ASTM C 1556, which allows the calculation of a chloride or an apparent chloride diffusion rate by uh, taking measurements of chlorides at various depths. So it really starts at the at the 28 day mark or so is, is the way that we like to perform the test. Please do refer to the standards. Don't just take our word for it because we're gonna tell you how we like to perform the test for comparing uh, concrete treated with, with SCP products to untreated concrete. Um, we would like to wait 28 days, give them standard curing uh, 28 days, and then coat it with a two-part polyurethane, marine polyurethane well, hold on. epoxy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's back up a little bit. Okay. Yes. Pay attention to standard, read it, because we might be just a little off on memory versus yeah. actually reading a standard. But you said 28-day moist curing. We do for the control samples. The treated ones we do not. We do leave those in there, and I want to make sure everybody's aware yeah, of that. Yeah, that's a great point. That we are not doing our treated samples. Yeah, so we're relying on the SCP treatment to provide the curing, curing for our for the the treated samples, and uh, so we coat the the samples. We leave the top face of the specimen uncoated so that there is a single face for the salt water to enter the concrete. We then submerge those specimens in three percent sodium chloride solution. Ocean water. Ocean water, basically. And we let them cook. I mean, well, let them stay there for a while. No, do, no please do not <laughs> cook. Your... <sighs> Man, heat and what it does to concrete micro fractures. Yeah. Like that. that's that's a, well, that's a great point, though. Sample prep is important. You don't want to artificially condition the specimens to where you're going to crack them or anything as far as that goes. Um, but at the end of the desired time, whether it's 56, 90 days, 180, 365 days, whatever it is, you pull the samples out. Yep, you pull the samples out, and then uh, you can grind. You know, you grind them or, or mill them to the desired depths, and uh, you're going to need at least six data points. So, uh, we like to allow them to soak in the salt water for longer periods of times. So we typically like to go 180 days or even a year out to be able to get some nice data points. Um, and then we do our titrations. Whether it be acid or water soluble. Acid or water soluble or both. Or both. Or both. And, uh, and that will give us the measurement of chlorides at the various depths in the concrete. And from that, what can we do? The apparent diffusion coefficient. Yes, we can calculate the apparent chloride diffusion coefficient, which is important because... Life 365 Stadium or modeling for concrete design life. Yeah. You can plug it in and you can get a better understanding of what your concrete's actually doing yep. when you're designing that. And that's how you can test the actual concrete. If you have an actual mix design, you've got to uh, propose for a project, you can use that mix design, put it up in the lab if you know ahead of time, long enough in advance, you can perform the testing on the actual concrete that is proposed for use and then uh, and get a, a more accurate representation or, or prediction of what the service life might be. I think that pretty much wraps it up, doesn't it? Except Josh? for one thing, we've said one word like a couple times, and, and, and being a dad myself, there is a dad joke involved in it. Uh-oh. Is when does a joke become a dad joke? 
I don't know. When, when it becomes apparent. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, we refer to it as apparent chloride diffusion just simply because uh, it's, it doesn't plug exactly into like a second, second order Fickian diffusion model exactly right. So you, it's an approximation in some ways. So yeah. that's why it's an apparent chloride diffusion rate. So just a quick overview of the ASTM C1556. Again, we're not getting to all the do's and don'ts of it. We just want to give you an overview as to how we're using it and what we're using it for. So continue to watch us, like, subscribe, and look out for more videos. We appreciate your time and efforts. Thank you so much.